During the Edo period, there was a sword feared as a yōtō, demonic blade, which samurai hesitated to possess. This was the Muramasa. The term Muramasa refers to both the name of a school of swordsmiths from the Issei province, Kuwana, and the swords forged by this school. The founder is believed to be Sengo Muramasa. He is known as one of the most famous swordsmiths. At the time of his birth, his mother prayed to the thousand-armed kanon enshrined at Yara hashiri As a result, he claimed himself as a child of the thousand-armed kanon and took the surname Sengo. The first-generation Sengo Muramasa initially made agricultural tools in Kuana. The land of Kuana was very peaceful and weapons weren't necessary. However, as the Muramachi period progressed into the era of the Warring States, the demand for swords surged. It was then that Muramasa began forging swords. The swordsmith Muramasa continued for several generations, starting from Sengo Muramasa. Kuana, where Muramasa forged his blades, was blessed with high-quality water, essential for sword-making at that time. Moreover, the first-generation Muramasa was influenced by the renowned blacksmith group from Gifu Prefecture known as Sekikaji. Hence, the Japanese swords Muramasa produced were razor-sharp, and as combat swords, they were among the most highly prized of their time. It is said that every samurai aspired to own such a coveted piece at least once in their lifetime. A distinguishing feature of Muramasa's swords is the consistent blade patterns on both sides, exuding a commanding style. Although their sharpness was described as fearsome, no evaluations based on test cutting were ever conducted. It's believed that Muramasa produced more wakizashi and short swords than longer swords like tachi. Another characteristic is the unique tanago belly shape of the tang. Tanago belly literally refers to the swollen shape resembling the belly of the tanago fish. While Muramasa is celebrated as a master craftsman, he was rumored to have a deranged personality, and this madness was said to be transferred to his blades. For better or worse, the stoic swordsmith Muramasa had extensive social connections, was enthusiastic about research, and crafted numerous collaborative blades with swordsmiths from other schools. While Muramasa's swords were popular as masterpieces, as the Edo period progressed, they became notorious as cursed blades against the Tokugawa family. Tokugawa Ieyasu established the Edo Shogunate, unified Japan, and built a peace that lasted for over 260 years. Alongside Oda Nobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi, he is known as one of the three unifiers of the Civil War period. Despite achieving unification, numerous misfortunes occurred throughout his life. During his alliance with Oda Nobunaga, his primary wife, Tsukiyama Nono, and his eldest son, Matsudaira Nobuyasu, were suspected of collusion with the Takeda clan. As a result, under Nomonaga's orders, they both committed seppuku using a Muramasa blade. Furthermore, during the Battle of Sekigahara, when a spear, carried by one of Ieyasu's retainers, pierced the helmet and head of an enemy general without a single chip in its blade, Ieyasu wanted to see it. However, when he took the spear in his hands, he accidentally cut his finger. That spear was also crafted by Muramasa. In another incident, during the summer campaign of the Siege of Osaka, the formidable warrior Sanada Yukimura surprised Ieyasu's main camp, and the short blade he hurled was, astonishingly, a Muramasa. The legends of Muramasa's cursed blades continue. In fact, even before Ieyasu's birth, Muramasa's blades had been bringing misfortune upon the Tokugawa family. 
Firstly, we talk about Ieyasu's grandfather, the renowned general Matsudaira Kiyoyasu. In 1530, while on a campaign to subdue enemy lords, Kiyoyasu was suddenly assassinated in his camp by one of his own retainers. This retainer mistakenly believed that Kiyoyasu had killed his father. Due to this incident, the Matsudaira clan lost its unity and began to decline. Shockingly, the blade used in this assassination was a Muramasa. Next is Ieyasu's father, Matsudaira Hirotara. After the assassination of Kiyoyasu, Hirotara, at a young age, inherited the leadership and managed to maintain his domain only by submitting to neighboring lords. In 1549, during a drinking session, one of his close aides, Iwamatsu Hachiya, suddenly went berserk and killed Hirotara with a side blade. Once again, the blade used was a Muramasa. In essence, Ieyasu lost his grandfather, father, son, and even his wife, all due to the cursed Muramasa blades. Ieyasu, realizing that Muramasa's swords were cursed, forbade all his retainers from possessing a Muramasa blade. Additionally, due to its reputation as a cursed sword that brought harm to the Tokugawa family, many daimyos related to the Tokugawa began to discard their Muramasa swords. As a result, fewer people carried a Muramasa, but its notoriety only grew, especially because of its portrayal in a certain kabuki performance. Kabuki is a traditional Japanese theatrical art that started during the Edo period and was extremely popular among commoners. This particular performance that made Munamasa famous was based on a tragic event that occurred in Edo. The incident took place in the most famous red light district of its time, Yoshiwara. A merchant named Jiro Zayamon fell deeply in love with the most popular courtesan in Yoshiwara and visited her frequently. When he proposed to buy out her contract, she began to hesitate, revealing that she had a lover she truly cared for. Feeling rejected, the merchant went into a rage, drew his sword, and killed her. His fury did not stop there. He went on a rampage, injuring and killing many, in what became infamously known as the Yoshiwara Massacre. Shockingly, the sword used by the man in this massacre was a Muramasa. Thus, with this backdrop, rumors such as Muramasa's sword craves blood, and possessing a Munamasa blade brings a curse, became widespread fears among the people. It's said that the man who caused this incident had the Munamasa blade as a keepsake from a samurai. While his jealousy led to the tragedy, one wonders if the curse of the sword transformed him into a monster. Contrary to the Tokugawa clan, there were prominent figures who cherished and collected Muramasa blades. These were individuals who aimed to overthrow the Edo shogunate founded by Ieyasu. For them, the Muramasa became a symbol of good fortune. In 1651, Yui Shosetsu, who planned to overthrow the shogunate, regarded Muramasa as his favorite sword. Furthermore, not just during the Edo period, but also during the Bakumatsu period, the allure of Muramasa continued. Famous figures from the Meiji era, Saigo Takamuri and Ito Hirobumi, were known to favor them. These anti-shogunate figures actively sought after Munamasa blades, elevating them as symbols of the movement to overthrow the shogunate. In reality, is Munamasa's blade truly a cursed sword? It's possible that Muramasa's blade just happened to be used in these brutal incidents. This is because the area of Kuana, where Muramasa was active, 
was situated quite close to the Mikawa province, the homeland of the Tokugawa family. Moreover, because of their affordable price and exceptional sharpness, they were highly favored by the samurai in that region. In fact, it's said that a significant number of Munamasa blades were in circulation within Mikawa province. Given this, it wouldn't be surprising if tragedies associated with the Tokugawa family coincidentally involved a Muramasa blade. We hope you enjoyed this exploration into the world of Japanese swords. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting content about the history of Japanese swords. Until next time, sayonara.